Hey guys, it's uh, me, Sean from uh, C3 Cyber Club. This is our video tutorial on lighting um, using Platinum Art Sandbox as a game and design engine. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get into lighting and show you guys how uh, lighting can really add uh, to your game. So uh, let's get started. So if you guys look right now, um, we have a lot of different colored lights in this particular room. Um, you notice that it's already sort of sent, uh, sort of set a uh, sense of mood uh, for a game. It's a lot. It's a little bit more scarier. Um, it's a little bit add a little bit more depth to it. Uh, if we go over here, uh, we can see some neon green lights that are kind of uh, working with the textures that we have. And uh, if we go out here again, things get a little bit darker, and we have sort of a more of a purplish hue on our wall here. So a lot of um, things that I've noticed in our classes are a lot of kids. Um, they kind of put lighting to the side. They don't really think about it that much. And uh, if you really um, think about lighting and how to have it sort of encompass your, your game design and your, your level design, um, it's going to add a lot more depth to the game. Um, so it's one of those things that's going to add a lot more polish and uh, you don't want to sort of forget about um, when you're uh, creating your game. So let me go ahead and just uh, press L right now. Uh, this turns off all the lights. So this is what most games usually look like, especially with our younger kids. Uh, when they're designing the games uh, because there is no lighting. They don't really put much lighting in there So everything's kind of flat. It's very plain. There's no really sort of a uh, feel or mood to it But when you turn those lights on everything changes. It's a lot more uh, it seems almost more interactive or it's a lot It's just as um, an extra layer uh, polish to this uh, game that we already have here so uh, let's get into the lighting. Let's start uh, from scratch um, So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna delete these lights that I have in here right now And let's go ahead and just delete that one, and this one right here. Okay. So when we start a uh, light from scratch, there's two ways to do it. Either we can go ahead and press Escape, and go to New Light, which is right here. And in this option, uh, what we can do is we can set the radius. So we can say how wide do we want it. So we can extremely long, uh, do moderate, short. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say uh, long for right now. Uh, I can go in here and set the color. So here's all the colors I can choose from. Let's go ahead and just say blue. And uh, what I'm going to do is click Spawn Light. So I press Escape, and now here's the new light that it gave me. So what I need to do is go ahead and I'm going to place it into the game uh, in this room here. So I'm going to kind of move it up, and I'm going to put it right around here. Okay. And uh, so once I go ahead and press E, uh, whoops, let me get rid of this light too. And hey, I got some more lights over here. Let me delete this one. Okay. So when I go in the game mode, you notice nothing really changed. Everything's exactly the way it was before. The reason why is we have to actually generate a, what we call a lighting map. On Platinum Art Sandbox, um, what it does is it generates all the lighting, where all the shadows, where all the highlights are going to be, and uh, it creates it as sort of in a patch framework. So uh, there will be little patches where the, the lighting will be generated. So we're going to go ahead and just press K. Uh, what that does is it's called Quick Light, so it generates all the lighting in the game. And now when I press uh, E, now you notice there's a blue color, you know, the room's a lot darker, the uh, the ceiling is definitely hi uh, highlighted here, um, we have the blue right there. Now if I ever want to move this light again, maybe I want to move it over here now, maybe I want to uh, go ahead and change the properties of it, what I can do is I can go ahead and press F3, um, and I can go ahead and just change the radius, uh, I can go back in here and change the colors if I want to, maybe I want a different color. Now remember, again, I have to go ahead and press K to generate the new lighting map where nothing's going to happen. There we go, so here's the changes. Pretty cool. Okay. Now if you want to set a light and uh, you want to make it sort of uh, like the entire, like uh, almost like it lights the entire environment, set it to zero. Zero represents infinity. So if I was to actually take this light and let's drag it outside here. And uh, you notice this is what my level looks like. I'm going to go ahead and generate it now. See, it lights the entire environment. So now we have a shadow cast from here. Um, even these little lights pop up when we have lighting on. So it's very important that you really utilize lighting because uh, a lot of things you might miss when you don't put the lights there. So. Now that we moved it out of here, you'll actually notice this room gets dark because, well, there's a ceiling, so we have to put another light in here uh, to make sure this room is lit. So the other way you can do lights is you can go ahead and just press New Entity, and remember by default it makes a new light, so that's one way to do it. Um, we'll go ahead and just uh, make this red, 
and uh, let's bump this down a little bit. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press K. Join a new lighting map. So the more lights you have, the more geometry, more animations. It's gonna take longer for your game to load. So just sort of keep that in mind when you're doing uh, adding lights in your game. It's usually one of the last steps that you want to do. Uh, the reason why is because if you start changing your geometry like this, you notice these patches sort of came up. The reason why is because it has to generate a new lighting map because of that. So make sure that your geometry is done. Uh, your mo map models, and uh, that way you can just speed up things much quicker. Because right now I'm getting, I'm pretty lucky with these uh, loading times only being about a couple seconds. They can sometimes be up to five minutes, depending on how much stuff you have going on. So that's lighting right there. Um, we can also make a spotlight. So we can go here to New Light. We can go to F3. We can go to Type. Go to Spotlight right here. And as long as you make the spotlight near the light that you've built. It'll link together. So now when I move this around, it's actually linked to the light that I have. So let's go ahead and press F3, and I'm gonna make the radius a lot bright, uh, bigger, wider here. So I'm gonna have it sort of look over in this area. Maybe I'm gonna have it look at the uh, the door, and let me bump this up. I'm gonna make this really high. This is pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and just press K, generate the lighting map. And oops, I had I think I actually turned off the. Uh, there we go. Let me do that one more time. Actually, you can kind of see it. See, there's a very, very, uh, it's very dim. But if I was to bump that up even higher, or even bring it closer, it should be even brighter. Uh, just a little bit. Okay. Now, um, we can get into some other sort of advanced lighting techniques. Uh, we can go here to New Light, and we can go to Advance. Here we can set uh, how many lights you want to create, so we can make more than one. Uh, we can do the radius of it, and also the colors individually. So this is helpful if you have all the lights and you want them to be the same color. Or you can also copy a light. Press V to paste in your game, and generate a new lighting map. And now I have two lights in here. So you can do the same thing, uh, it's just really if you're starting out you want to use the advanced lighting technique. Um, Another technique we can do is uh, our patch lighting. So I'm going to go ahead and press uh, escape and I'm going to go to editing GUI. And uh, what I want to do is go to light maps right here. So if you want more control over your lights, um, you can uh, change some of the way that, ways that it's sort of generated into the game. We can set a lower quality, which is going to make it speed up much quicker. Or we can do a higher quality, which will take a little bit longer, but the lighting uh, will be a lot much better. Um, we can change the anti-aliasing, which is basically if you ever look uh, in a game, and sometimes they call them jaggies. Uh, it's usually like an edge here. If you look kind of the corner, there's sometimes a little bit of a jagged edge. Well, this is representing the shadows. So sometimes our shadows gonna have a jagged edge. So if you want your uh, shadows to be much smoother, you're gonna go ahead to your editing GUI, your light maps, and bump up the anti-aliasing to a higher number. Uh, same thing with the shadows. Uh, the higher the number, the better. Um, also, we can go ahead and we can get in here and we can add a little bit more of a blur to it. And also, you can set the skylight color. Skylight is pretty much if you want to make the sun. Um, this is the the option that we use. And you want to usually use these for a bigger map. Uh, this map right now is a size 10, but if you're using 12, 13, a skylight is a good uh, lighting source that will um, light the whole map and it won't take too much of your processing power to do it. So make sure to utilize that. We have a bigger set map, and here's where you can change the colors. So uh, that's just pretty much lighting. Make sure you uh, incorporate it into your game. It's going to make it look a lot more realistic and give it a lot more depth and just give it really a sense of mood so the uh, player really gets engaged into your game. So if you have any questions, just check us out at uh, c3cyberclub.com. You can also check out uh, Sandbox's website at sandboxgamemaker.com. And uh, hopefully you guys learned something. So we'll uh, see you guys again, and uh, take it easy.